until 2016, you'll be surprised to know, I was a firm believer in the Aryan invasion theory. I mean, I have been studying uh, and reading about history my entire life. And every single book I read, every single research paper or article I read, they all supported the Aryan invasion theory, including books and uh, by, by Indian authors, people like Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Dayanand Saraswati, and, and so many others. So everybody supported the Aryan invasion theory. So and, and there was a great deal of scientific evidence as well. There is the genetic evidence that links Indians to uh, people from Europe. There is the linguistic evidence that links India, the ancient languages of India, with the modern languages of Europe. And every single researcher, every single historian, they all drew the conclusion that this is an invasion that came from Eastern Europe or Central Asia into India and into Europe. And this is how we have these uh, connections. So I saw no reason to not believe it because everybody, every eminent historian, every scientist, they all unanimously agreed with this theory. And I was aware that there were certain Indian voices that were in, in opposition to this theory. I had heard about this out of India theory and I frankly found it embarrassing. I, my attitude was very simple. We know that we all, that humanity came out of Africa. So how does it matter that whether there was an invasion from by the Aryans from Europe or not? We are all migrants. So why do we have to oppose everything? Why do why do Indians, especially especially Hindu nationalists, have to say that everything came out of India? That was my position on this. I found this opposition to the Aryan invasion theory very embarrassing, right? Now, then what happened is that I recently uh, came across some new research about an invasion of Europe that happened about 5,000 years ago. So there was this bunch of horse riding men, extremely violent men who invaded Europe from the east about 5,000 years ago and they committed an absolute genocide in Europe. They wiped out every single European male and they took all the females as their uh, reproductive partners and in a very brief period of time the entire older Euro European male genetics were wiped out and today's Europeans are the descendants of these new invaders from 5000 years ago and the older European women. So, so I, I saw this, this research, let me show you some, I have spoken about this before. So this is one of the headlines, the most violent group of people who ever lived Horse riding Yamnaya tribe used their huge height and muscular build to brutally murder and invade their way across Europe more than 4,000 years ago. So this is one headline. This is another headline. The most murderous people of all time revealed in ancient DNA. This was a violent conquest of, of Europe and genetic analysis tells the tale for the first time. This was from 2019, but this news started coming in in research papers from 2015, I think, onwards. Here's one more, stored age genocide, vengeful prehistoric invaders who changed Europe forever. So essentially we find this sudden shift in European genetics. It's a clear indication of genocide, wide scale genocide. The entire genetic makeup, the patrilineal lineages change overnight almost in Europe. So this is a sudden influx of foreign genes. And of course there, there is a corresponding change in, in the kind of pottery and uh, cultural artifacts that you have. So everything changed all of a sudden, not just the genetics, but also the pottery, also the cultural artifacts, also the kind of uh, uh, burial goods you have, the kind of burial rituals you have and all that. And also you find this widespread evidence of, of massacres. As you can see, this is a mass grave, a number of people dumped together into a pit and buried hastily without any ceremony, without any respect. So these are the older, the, pre, the original Europeans who were massacred in enormous quantities by these new horse riding invaders. Okay, so I found this very interesting that this sort of a thing had, hap had happened in Europe. And I also found that these same Yamnaya invaders were supposed to have brought the Aryan genes into India, right? So I found this very curious. I found it very interesting and therefore I researched it further. I started re re researching the genetic uh, data that we have. I started researching the other, uh, all the other kinds of evidence. And uh, I found something very surprising. Let me, let me share another thing with you. 
So once I started looking into the genetics, I found very interesting and very surprising things. I found that when the out of Africa migration happened, the first place where humanity settled down was India. And, and more than 90% of the entire world's entire world's non-African males have are descended from an ancient Indian patrilineal genetic lineage, haplogroup F. So more than 90% of all non-African men who are alive in the world today are descended from an ancient Indian genetic lineage, haplogroup F. This is a patrilineal lineage which originated about, uh, about 60, 65,000 years ago in India. I also discovered after that, that more than 95% of all non-African women who are alive in the world today are also descended from two or three Indian genetic lineages, haplogroup M, N and R, which uh, the oldest of which arose in India between 65 and 75,000 years before today. So, so this tells us that India was the original founders zone, foundation zone of the out of Africa movement, it is from India that all other non-African populations were populated. So India is the ancestral region of all, almost all non-African humans today. I found this very surprising. Then I researched some more uh, ancient genet I mean, genetic papers. I found that there is almost no, there is completely negligible gene flow from outside into India in the past 10, 15,000 years. Negligible. When we talk about the Yamnaya invasion of Europe, that's a complete replacement event. The male genetics are wiped out and a new replacement genetics is put in. So that, is, so that is the Yamnaya invasion of Europe. But in the case of India, there is no such replacement event. The gene flow from outside is completely negligible in the past 10, 15,000 years. I also found that the uh, many genetic studies have uh, have uh, demonstrated that North India, South India have essentially the same genetics, right? You see, the the distance between Northern India, let's say Kashmir or Afghanistan, and Southern India is more than three thousand kilometers. It's an enormous subcontinent. The distance between Sweden and Greece is less than that, and the people of Sweden look very different from the people of Greece, right? So similarly, in India also, we have this enormous genetic diversity, but all, it's a very ancient, some 60, 70,000 year old ancient genetic population. And that's why there is so much diversity in facial features, in height, in, in skin color, in eye color, hair color, and all that. Right? Then I also found that the Indus Valley civilization is the oldest known civilization of all time the oldest continuously existing civilization in its cultural traits are still present in India today. What we call Hinduism was, was practiced five, 6,000 years ago in the Sapta Sindhu region. There is so much evidence of cultural continuity. So if there was an invasion into India, how come this culture was not destroyed and there was a cultural discontinuity like we find in Europe? And then where is the evidence of the massacres? If there was a Yamnaya invasion into India, and we know how brutal they were and we know what they did in Europe. We know the genocide they perpetrated in Europe. We know all the mass graves and destruction. So why is it not seen in India? Where is it, right? And so, so these are some of the things that tell us that there is something very fishy about this Aryan invasion theory. So we have evidence of cultural continuity. There is zero evidence of an invasion. There is zero evidence of a migration. And there is layer upon layer of archaeological, genetic, linguistic, literary, geological, hydrological, and all kinds of evidence that shows that India has been continuously inhabited by the same population for more than 60, 70,000 years. So all of this taken together shocked me completely. It shook my entire whatever I believed until then. And after this, after seeing the actual scientific data, I have come to the very firm conclusion that the out of India theory is much more viable and much more consistent with the facts than any Aryan invasion or migration or tourism or picnic theory. So that is uh, why after seeing the evidence, after seeing the factual evidence, after studying it for a very long time, I came to the conclusion that this Aryan invasion theory is completely fake. And after, after seeing all this, uh, I wrote an article in 2017 
So this is the article I wrote. It's in indiafacts.com. The title of the article is Aryan Invasion Myth, How 21st Century Science Debunks 19th Century Indology. So this is an article I published in 2017 in which I have given an entire detailed analysis of all the evidence that was available till 2017 about all these facts, about all these aspects of the Aryan invasion that, that are completely disproved by various scientific and other, other uh, evidence. So it's a reasonably detailed article. I would recommend that if you're interested, you should all go through this. So this is the first article that I know of that puts everything together in one place. Nowadays, of course, there are many more people who are investing their time into this and we have much more evidence that's coming out. But as far as I know, after all my detailed study, this this 27 arti 2017 article is the first article that puts everything together in one place. So this is everything that I found until that time. Of course, I have done more research uh, subsequent to this, uh, to the publication of this article. Uh, so so <clears throat> that is something I would recommend you people read. Now let me show you something else, right? Something uh, something that's a little more interesting. So these Yamnaya people that we spoke about, we spoke about these Yamnaya people who invaded Europe. They, their facial reconstructions were done. They found uh, they found these skeletons of these Yamnaya invaders, and this is what the re reconstructions look like as you can see these are reasonably european looking people right tall strong sturdy look at the face it is a european looking face this is another one another european looking individual young man strong man look at this person european looking person but these are all ancient uh, reconstructions from many many years ago Today, with more genetic information, with more genetic data, we know more details about these invaders of Europe. We know what was their skin color. We know what was their hair color. We know what was their eye color. And after knowing these, more, these additional details, newer facial reconstructions have been done of the men who changed the genetics of Europe forever. And this is what their reconstructions, accurate reconstructions look like. Take a look at this guy. This is an individual found in Volgograd Oblast, Russia, Yamnaya culture, Bronze Age, about four and a half, five thousand years ago. This is an invader of Europe, invader of Russia. These are the people, these are the ancestors of today's Europeans. This is one individual. Here is another individual. This is from, again, from Volgograd, Volgograd Oblast, Russia, Yamnaya culture. This is a third individual. This is from Astrakhan Oblast in Russia. These are all Kurgan burials, grave uh, Yamnaya graves. These are the invaders who are the ancestors of more than ninety, um, more than ninety percent of European men today. These guys, and here is a composite of these three. So, my friends, please tell me something. If you were to see these fine gentlemen walking on a street today, what is the first ethnicity that would come to your mind? Do they look like Russians? Do they look like Ukrainians? Do they look like Swedes? Do they look like Europeans? Do they look like Africans? Do they look like Chinese? What ethnicity comes to your mind when you see these fine gentlemen? To my mind, there's only one ethnicity that comes to mind. These guys are Euro are Indians. If you see them today, they would the first thing that would come to your mind is that these guys are Indians. So these are, this is what these invaders of Europe looked like. They invaded Europe from the east 5,000 years ago. It was a violent, barbaric invasion. These were young horse riding men, average six feet height, strong, muscular, and they just rampaged across Europe and changed the entire genetics of Europe. They killed every single, every last European man and they took the European women as their wives or partners. And today's Europeans are descended from these fine gentlemen. So tell me now, which version of the invasion theory is correct? Right? It's very clear what's happening here.